What's up guys and welcome to the next episode of the Crack a Pack series. Today we're opening up the pack of Fate Reforged. Uh, this is actually a personal kind of, not favorite set of mine, but one of the mo more recent sets that I actually really enjoyed. Uh, there were a lot of good things in it. Ugin sitting at $50 is, pr is definitely the best. Uh, Monastery Mentor is one of my favorite cards also, but we did have Tassiger in here, Soulfire Grandmaster, uh, Flame Wake Phoenix, which has seen a lot of play recently in the Hollow One deck in Modern. A uh, lot of really cool stuff, so we'll do the best we can to hopefully pull something exciting. Uh, as always, we'll do the best we can as well to pick out our pack one, pick one, uh, as if this was a draft scenario. So we'll do the best we can. I can't promise that I will pick the 100% uh, correct card, but I'll definitely do the 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 justice that I can do to this pack. So we'll see what we get. Uh, our first card here, Sultai Skullkeeper. A 2-1 for 1 and a blue when it enters the battlefield, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. Uh, this is really to fuel the Delve mechanic, which uh, was heavily featured in this set. Uh, Delve is great. Sultai is really where this wants to be. Uh, you can tell via the insignia here. Uh, fantastic mechanic. It lets you play very, very expensive cards a lot quicker, uh, which is fantastic. Gurmag Angler being kind of the best example of that, I would say, just because it's actually hit... Uh, not only modern, but even legacy and just some old school magic play. Uh, so cards like this are enablers for that. I like having the, the delve cards first before picking the enablers, so I wouldn't want to first pick this. Uh, Sandblast, an instant for two and a white. It deals five damage to target attacking or blocking creature. Pretty straightforward removal. Uh, I do like this card um, quite a lot. In fact, I highly pick removal generally. Uh, and so cards like these are really appealing to me. So I do kind of like that. Uh, Jeskai Sage, a 1-1 one, one for 1 and a blue. It has prowess, uh, so whenever you cast a non-creature spell, this creature gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn, uh, and when it dies, you draw a card, so it does replace itself on death. I'm not a huge fan of this card. You're relying on being able to cast either instant sorceries, artifacts, some other kind of card uh, to make this, even on curve, good. Uh, you have to play one non-creature spell per turn to make this good, which is an investment. And so if you're investing your time and your resources into playing those cards, you're not forwarding your board plan. And if they remove this creature, you're just done. Uh, and so I'm not a fan of this card, just in general, not a fan at all. Uh, Sultai Runemark, it's an enchant creature for two and a black. Uh, the creature gets plus two, plus two, and has death touch as long as you control a green or a blue permanent. Again, seeing that Sultai mechanic, these were obviously uh, three color combos that were throughout all of this set, Jeskai, Sultai, uh, Teamer, I believe, was in here. There were a number of them. So, uh, Sultai was one of my favorites. I don't like this card, though. Uh, again, Enchant Creature. It's the classic issue that I always talk about, so I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, Grim Contest. An instant one, a black and a green. Choose target creature you control and target creature an opponent controls. Each of those creatures deals damage equal to its toughness to the other. Uh, this is just basically, it's sort of like a fight mechanic. Uh, it works basically the same way, uh, but it's based off of toughness. I don't mind this card. I think it's fine. I'd rather have the Sandblast because I feel like it hits more and it's reliant on less. Uh, and so for that reason, I would pick Sandblast over this for sure. Uh, Great Horn Krushok. Krushok? I, I might be mispronouncing that. It's a 3-5 vanilla creature for four and a white. Not very exciting, unfortunately. It's really not even on curve very good. Uh, at five, you would expect hopefully at least a 5-5, five five, so this just doesn't seem to do it for me at all. Uh, Goblin Heel Cutter, a 3-2 with, uh, excuse me, for three and a red. When it attacks, target creature can't block this turn. It also has the dash mechanic, which was really good. So two and a red. You can cast this spell for its dash cost. Uh, if you do it gains haste and it's returned from the battlefield to the owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step, I really like this card. Uh, it's highly, highly aggressive, which is great in draft. Uh, you can just dash this out multiple times. It's fantastic. So I do really, really like that card. Uh, Ambush Crotic. Crotic? Uh, uh, might be mispronouncing that again. A 5-5 five, five, uh, with Trample for 5 and a green. When it enters the battlefield, return another creature you control to its owner's hand. Uh, generally, you can kind of exploit this. That's kind of the idea. Um, this is in teamer color, or it really fits the teamer theme. Uh, but I'm not a huge fan of this card. It's a little understated, in my opinion, and bouncing something is most oftentimes a drawback, I would say. So I'm not a huge fan. Uh, Gorswine, a 4 1 vanilla, vanilla creature for two and a red. This is really just curve consideration, kind of uh, at best. 
I don't really like vanilla creatures. You want things to do as much as possible in draft. You want every card to be as high quality as possible. And while this has a lot of power, it has a very small butt. Uh, it dies very easily, unfortunately. So not a huge fan of that card. Uh, Frontier Mastodon. A 3-2 for 2 and a green. It has Ferocious, so this is a good mechanic too. Uh, it enters the battlefield with a 1-1 counter on it if you control a creature with power 4 or greater. Uh, and generally that was fairly easy to trigger in my experience. I drafted a little bit with this set and I enjoyed it. Uh, Ferocious seemed to be very, very strong. Uh, so I do like this card actually. A 3-2 for 3 isn't terrible anyway, so it's decent curve and it could be a 4-3 for 3, which is great. Uh, and most oftentimes, I think generally you'll be able to pull that off. Uh, so I do like this card, not more than the heel cutter though. Uh, Vault Breaker, a 4 2 for 3 and a red. Whenever it attacks, you may discard a card if you do draw a card, and it also has dash for 2 and a red. I actually don't know if I like this more than the heel cutter. I like the ability that uh, heel cutter has where something can't block, it allows you to be more aggressive. Uh, the Vault Breaker definitely cycles you through your deck though quite well, so I'll keep it over here for now. I do kind of like it. Uh, Destructor Dragon, a 4-4 four, four for 4 and 2 green. It has flying, and when it dies, destroy target non-land, or excuse me, non-creature permanent. Uh, this is interesting. I feel like in draft this isn't as good uh, just because it's a non-creature permanent, and creatures are really going to be the premier thing that you have to worry about. Uh, so for that reason, I don't think this is quite as good, uh, but it is a 4-4 four, four flyer for 6. So I'm going to keep it over here again for now. We'll, we'll figure that one out. Pyrotechnics, 4 and a red. It deals 4 damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures and or players at sorcery speed. This is just great removal, uh, honestly. I think this is fantastic. I'd prefer to take creatures early though if I can, and so I would in this situation, but I would really like this card. Uh, well, okay, so the, the mythic actually is Whisperwood Elemental. This card takes over games by itself. So it's a 4-4 four, four for 3 and 2 uh, green. At the beginning of your end step, manifest the top card of your library, so you put it onto the battlefield face down as a 2-2 creature. You can turn it face up at any time for its mana cost if it's a creature. Again, only if it's a creature. Uh, you, do, you have the ability to sacrifice the Whisperwood Elemental, and until end of the turn, face up non-token creatures you control, gain when this creature dies, manifest the top card of your library. This is just a powerhouse card. This is single-handedly something that can take over a game. Uh, you just spit out tons of creatures, and then you're able to sort of protect, not necessarily protect, but um, replace a bunch of creatures. If for some reason there's a sweeper or something like that, uh, you can easily kind of deal with it. Um, I really like this card. It would definitely be my pick, uh, without a doubt, though there were actually a few pretty good picks in this pack, I would say. Uh, by all means, let me know in the comments section if you agree with that. Uh, please make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this episode of the Crackaback series. These are really fun. We're almost up to 200 also. Uh, it's kind of insane that I've opened almost 200 just random packs. But hopefully you guys are enjoying it. If you are, please make sure to show some love down in the comments section. Like the video and of course subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching guys. I'll see you in the next Crackaback episode.